king of love my shepherd is whose goodness fails me never i nothing lack if i am his and he is mine for ever where streams of flow my ransomed soul he's leading and where the verdant pastures grow with food celestial feeding and so through all the length of days your goodness shepherd may I sing your praise within your house forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen the Lord be with you and with your spirit welcome to the fourth Sunday of Easter in this extraordinary time when two or three are gathered there am I in the midst of them says the Lord and we gather we gather virtually but we do gather in the presence of the Lord and before our risen Lord we acknowledge that we are sinners that we need healing and forgiveness in our lives you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom Lord have mercy Lord have mercy you come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness Christ have mercy Christ have mercy you will come again in glory to lead us to the Father's kingdom Lord have mercy Lord have mercy may Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us together to everlasting life amen Thanks for 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The Word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit, was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. 
the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Praise to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Traditionally, this fourth Sunday of Easter has, for obvious reasons, been called Good Shepherd Sunday. The image of the Good Shepherd reaches right back to David, the first king of the royal house of Judah, who was originally a young shepherd. The first reading is the only one that doesn't mention sheep or shepherds, but it's linked thematically, because the focus of all our readings is that of leadership. Whose voice do we follow today, and why follow that voice and not others? We all look for leaders to promise us safety and happiness, prosperity and a life without hardship or pain. But our better selves realise that we also need leaders who are willing to challenge us. I think instantly of President Kennedy's call, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Great leaders call us to accept life's complexities, to confront the fears and the worries that face us, and they guide us in dealing with our often alarming problems. Authentic leadership is about more than power and control. Those are often resented and resisted. Our psalm today characterizes great leadership it provides rest and refreshment. It guides our steps. It nourishes us and leads us to God. Peter, in our first reading from Acts, is an example of this authentic authority. He's willing to proclaim the truth even when others find it tough to hear. He refutes error and calls for a change of heart even when it makes considerable demands. The ultimate model of leadership is, of course, Jesus. Jesus is gentle and familiar, the voice of the true shepherd who is committed to the safety and security of his flock. 
Jesus is willing to put his own, in, his own interests aside for the sake of his flock. Jesus knows his sheep, they recognize his voice and are willing to follow his call. Jesus contrasts a good shepherd with others who come only to steal, harass and ultimately destroy sheep that doesn't belong to them. Jesus identifies himself not only with the shepherd but also with the gate of the sheepfold. If the sheep are to flourish, they have to come and go through the gate. If they stay in the fold, they'll decline for lack of pasture. On the other hand, if they don't return to the sheepfold at night, they'll be at risk. So they have to come and go through the gate, which affords them both growth and protection. By describing himself as the gate, the gate of the sheepfold, Jesus indicates that only through an ongoing personal relationship with him will members of the community find life and growth. If we commit to following the kind of good leadership depicted in our readings, we will have to be ready to accept the heavy demands it will make of us. Peter's audience in Acts is told to admit their mistakes and repent from them. If we want to follow the Good Shepherd, then we have to accept that there will be dark valleys as well as verdant pastures and restful waters. We also have to let go of our own agendas in order to deliver ourselves into his care and protection. This is both comforting and challenging. Comforting because we have a shepherd who loves us so completely and challenging because we know the price that he and many of his followers have paid in being true to their mission. As we continue with our Eucharist, let's pray that we will always hear, know and follow the voice of our Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd knows the sheep. With confidence in God's care, we give voice to our needs. That those who suffer from isolation or fear in the valley of death be led by the risen Christ to hope and trust in the green valley. We pray to the Lord. That those who shepherd us through these uncertain days, especially medical professionals, government leaders, and all those who put themselves in harm's way, feel the presence of the Good Shepherd to guide our way. We pray to the Lord that young people respond generously to God's call to serve as priests and religious, especially in our Archdiocese and the Society of Jesus. We pray to the Lord that all those who would be baptized, confirmed, married, or receiving First Eucharist in these days be upheld by our love and prayers. We pray to the Lord that the sick and dead of our parish community may be accompanied by the Good Shepherd to places of refreshment, light, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, you care for all your people and you provide for us in abundance. Hear our prayers that we might realize your kingdom here and now. We ask you this through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. If we were together this Sunday, we'd now be taking up our regular collection. This funds the parish finances and helps the needs of our 
vulnerable brothers and sisters. Our Sunday collections fund a good part of our regular operating budget, and we have projected a major shortfall. To those who already give, thank you very much. Your donations help keep alive the ministry and the work of our parish. If you would like to give a one-time donation or support the parish in a more regular way by participating in our parish pledge, please visit trinity.org and hit the donate button. If you regularly give by cash or check, I encourage you to move to electronic giving. This will allow us to continue ministries to our parishioners and to the wider DC community without interruption. But most of all, thank you again for your generosity in these difficult times. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. So let us pray, let us pray that our sacrifice will be accepted by God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of God's holy church. Grant, we pray, Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks at all times. But in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, with every land, every people, we exult in your praise, and with the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, we sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until you come again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Wilton our Bishop, with all the bishops and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labour and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection grant them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her husband Joseph, the apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. children, and so we have the courage to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your disciples, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Take away 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who comes to take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ be the safe for everlasting life. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. again 
on the last day with the faithful rich and poor coming to the house of lord jesus we will find an open door there we will find an open door though we walk through the darkness evil we do not fear you are walking beside us with your rod and your staff only goodness and kindness follow us all our lives we shall dwell in the lord's house for so many years to come we shall rise again on the last day with the faithful rich and poor coming to the house of lord jesus we will find an open door there we will find